Hello, everyone. Thanks for being with us. We're very happy to introduce to you Dr. Robert McFarland. Dr. McFarland is the 2019 winner of the first project funded by the Lee Syndrome International Consortium. Now, Dr. McFarland's project is called Lee Syndrome, Investigating Outcome Measure and Natural History. It carries the acronym LION, a prospective longitudinal cohort study. Now, a little bit about the consortium. It is a global group of leading mitochondrial disease patient advocacy groups whose dedication is to fund the best science wherever it is in the world. And that leads us to Dr. McFarland, who is joining us from the United Kingdom, specifically the Welcome Center for Mitochondrial De Research at Newcastle University. Dr. McFarland, thank you so much for being with us and taking time out of your busy day. Well, thank you for the invitation to come. and uh, It's a pleasure to be here. So you are no stranger to mitochondrial disease research. You've been working in this field for nearly two decades. Tell us, how did you get interested in that field? Yes, thank you for that reminder, Cliff, of how long I've been in this field. Uh, 20 years is a, is a long time. Um, I got interested as a, as a young uh, doctor in, in training. Uh, I was always interested in doing some research and was introduced to Professor, now uh, Professor Sir Doug Turnbull, um, back in 2000. Um, and I approached Welcome uh, about funding a research program for me and a clinical training fellowship for me. Um, and I was fortunate enough to uh, gain a scholarship to from Welcome to do that training. Uh, and did that here in Newcastle in Professor Turnbull's lab. Um, I also had the opportunity during that time to get exposure to patients with mitochondrial disease through his clinic that he was developing. At that time, he was seeing adults rather than, than children. Uh, and I think he saw an opportunity in me as a pediatric neurology trainee to develop a children's clinic here in Newcastle. And that's what I've been doing steadily over the last 20 years. Well, your research grant, uh, it enables you to conduct a natural history study on Lee syndrome patients. Tell us about the study and tell us what you're working on. Yes, so the study is particularly looking at Lee syndrome patients, um, and it's a predominantly a natural history study where we will also be looking at some of the outcome measures that might be applicable in clinical trials. Um, Lee syndrome, uh, as your listeners will, will understand, is quite variable in terms of the clinical features that present, but also in terms of the progression of the disease. And we have some children who are very severely affected by Lee syndrome uh, and others who are less severely affected who survive into teenage and adult life. Um, we really need to get a very good understanding of the clinical features that present in Lee syndrome and how those change over time. Lots of interest is now uh, occurring from the, the pharmaceutical companies about running clinical trials for um, particular drugs. And to understand whether that drug is working or not, we need to know that the change that is seen when the drug is given is not something that might have been anticipated or expected anyway. Um, and likewise, if a drug's failing to work, is that because the disease is so severe that, that the change was inevitable anyway? So we need a, a better understanding of what's happening in terms of the progress of disease, and that's called the natural history. In addition, we are trying to see how we can assess that change. Um, there are... Uh, scales out there for looking at mitochondrial disease. Some of them developed in Newcastle, some of the international scales. And those give us a, an idea of the disease burden. But what we want to specifically do is validate other scales looking at particular clinical problems. So things like ataxia or, or, or unsteadiness. There is a scale called the SARA scale, um, which is a, a scale for measuring ataxia. We want to validate that in Lee syndrome patients. Um, and similarly for other types of scale, so there are other outcome measures that we will be validating in that group. And again, these will be really helpful for clinical trials because those are the sorts of measures that people are using as their primary outcomes or even secondary outcomes for clinical trials. So with regard to the International Lee Syndrome Consortium, 
how does this preliminary natural history study aid in broader goals set forth globally by this consortium? So I, I, I think the, the aim of the consortium is, is to get a cure for leucine. Um, and I think we have to take small steps initially to, to get to that. Um, but it's really important that those small steps are, are a solid foundation on which to base conclusions and, and, and the direction of travel. So my view would be that we really need to understand Lee's syndrome and how it presents and how it changes with time as the really first crucial step in getting towards a cure. We then also need to say, well, if we're looking for a cure, how do we know if that is the cure? And that's how that we do that through um, large-scale clinical trials. Well, what do we measure in those clinical trials? We measure outcome measures. And those outcome measures need to be relevant to the disease itself. And we'll be looking both at clinical outcome measures, i.e. ones that, that doctors can measure or researchers can measure, um, and patient reported outcome measures, so ones that the patients and their, their carers or parents can report. And, Dr. and those will be really crucial in terms of forming uh, the design of clinical trials to answer that question about is this a cure for leucine? It's very important work. And thank you so much for updating us on the project. I hope you'll come back and, and give us a further update. We look I would forward. Love, love to. We look forward to hearing more. If you would like to learn more about the consortium, visit leesyndrome.org or umdf.org. Thanks for being with us.